In this tutorial, we're going to look at the use of rigid body dynamics to create the effect of falling rocks or an avalanche. You can start by opening up the Start Boulders scene file from the Exercise 7 training project, and in it you'll see three boulders. So we have three different rocks, and if I draw a render region, we have some texture maps on those rocks as well. These rocks are going to act as instances for a rock slide that happens from the top of this cliff. We need to start off with an emitter object, so I'll create that. Uh, I will build a grid to act as my emitter. And I need to get the grid to the top of this uh, embankment here. So with the grid selected, I'm going to use a constraint object to cluster to get that object uh, close to where I want it to go. I'm going to pick this point at the top of the hill here and constrain my grid to that point. Uh, and then the usefulness of my constraint tool gone, I'm going to actually remove all the constraints. Remember, you can uh, even look under the grid object in the constraints folder and delete the constraint that you see. So I've got my grid up at the top of the mountain here. I'm going to just momentarily store a memo cam up top here, so I have two angles to uh, look at. And I'll frame the grid. I need to figure out which way the surface normals are pointing, so I'll emit based on those normals. Okay, so we're Y up. And I'm going to make this grid a little larger. Just making my emission plane here. Size it up. And rotate it. Kind of something like that. Okay, so it's well out of the way of the, uh, of the camera. I'm going to use that as my uh, rock emitter. So I'll name the grid like that. And with it picked in my Explorer, I'll go and create a emission. I'll simulate ice, create particles from selection, or emit particles from selection. XSI creates the point cloud attached to the emitter object, and you need to go into uh, an ice tree, press Alt-9 to open that up. And on the point cloud in the simulation stack, we see the ice tree that's been built for us, and we see the rock emitter object acting as the uh, emitter for the compound. The one thing I want to do here is actually switch from the simulate particles node to the simulate rigid bodies uh, node. The difference here is that the simulate particles uh, particles within the point cloud don't actually have an understanding of self-collision, which is where things like simulate rigid bodies are useful for simulating things like fluids, where you don't actually lose any volume. You know, the volume of the particles you emit based on their size uh, will be constant. So you can have accumulation effects or self-collisions once you switch from simulate particles to rigid bodies. Now remember that particles using rigid bodies in XSI use the same uh, environment, the physics engine, that rigid bodies use found in the simulate menu. So the rigid bodies that you see here. In fact, if you look under your preferences and we look under the simulation menu, the rigid body dynamics engine is the NVIDIA physics engine. We have the old open dynamics engine to choose from as well. You can also see that we have some file caching templates set up if we ever want to cache uh, any of the effects, any of our particle effects. So I'll actually replace the simulate particles node. If we look under tools simulation, we'll find the rigid bodies uh, node. You'll notice it has a few more options. Uh, you can add geometry as rigid body collisions. The only difference with adding obstacles through the rigid body node is that it uses the convex hull shape, uh, which isn't terribly accurate if you're trying to uh, have particles read the subtle contours, uh, in this case, of a mountain. So I'll just replace the simulate particles connection in port 3 and delete it. If we double click on the simulate rigid bodies node, we have some controls for obstacle elasticity and friction as well, so how much grab or how much energy is returned to uh, a particle upon colliding with it. In this case, I don't want the rocks to bounce so much, so I'm going to reduce the elasticity on the obstacle to about 29%, and we'll leave static and dynamic friction alone for now.